the Lord, if we can be honest, let's be fair and say that we know that the Lord can be inside of our house. That the Lord has been up with us through this week. That the Lord has blessed us in a miraculous way. That God has helped us to conquer some issues. And God's also helped us to gain some testimonies. And I just want to let everybody know, as we welcome the Lord even deeper into our hearts and our existence and our family and in our presence, we want to encourage everybody today to be so excited, so open, so welcome, so 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 willing, so so aware of what God wants to do with them today. And so let us begin to pray. Father God, we thank you. God, we are thankful for the fact that you have been with us this week. And God, we're also grateful for the fact that you will be on with us a little while longer. God, you have proven to us that you are a God who does anything but fail. And God, that you have the ability to hold us in the cradle of your arm. And the Lord, rock us in love and bathe us in your presence. And so God, we thank you today. We thank you for the fact that you, Lord, were able to take care of the things that we didn't know were going to be an issue, orchestrate the way before we got to them, and then allow us not to get weary and well-doing, not to give up in the trial, not to let go in the test. And the Lord, you allowed us to conquer. So Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for the fact that you are still healing our bodies and keeping things together. We thank you, Lord, that though people said and did disappointing things, God, that you still allowed for us to be not only just encouraged, but God, you allowed for us not to lose heart, God. You you allowed for us not to feel bad about ourselves and not for, to allow their calamity to become our perception of self. And so, Lord, today we thank you, God, for being our God. And Lord, we also want to admit right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that we are fully aware that we still have issues, God. We're still aware. But God, because because of what we're grateful for and lets us know that what we are sitting here with the worries on our hearts that we know that you can take care of it all because you have been a God that's been nothing but a testimony in our lives and so Lord we thank you welcome into this place welcome into our households God cleanse our buildings cleanse our living rooms cleanse our minds God scrub it down father we know that there have been demonic and satanic attacks going on in our nation, the Lord, trying to creep its way into our household, trying to press and suppress us. But God, we believe that the enemy is defeated and greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. And because we believe this, God, we are not worried anymore about what demonic forces or spirit or principalities or kingdoms and dominions are trying to come and take over in our house. God, we believe that because where you are, God, and you be spirit that if those spirits try to come in God where the spirit of the Lord is God we believe that there is liberty and so we thank you today oh God for being a liberating set free God and we believe every day that you will do exactly what you said you will do so God we believe right now every promise in you is yea and amen and every every tongue that is rise against us in judgment Lord we shall condemn father in Jesus name we do pray Amen, amen, amen. Happy Sabbath, guys. I'm so excited to be with you all today. So happy to be in the presence of the Lord and in this church. Let me tell you, I'm confident that the devil is busy, but I'm even more confident that the Lord is at work. And so we want to tell everybody we know right now that we have some difficulties in our, in our politics and in, in our world and in our earth right now going on with this, this coronavirus and this epidemic uh, that, and pandemic, for that matter, that we're dealing with. But we don't want you to be worried. Uh, the church of God is still at work and is still at hand. And we just want to encourage you today to know that you can still participate from a distance to make a difference in your local community. So we want everybody to know, right now, College Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church, we ran across a tent city downtown. It's one that doesn't seem to be too... Uh, nurtured, fostered, and or cared for. And so our, our, our amazing treasurer and media director uh, had a soft spot on the inside. And so we want to let you know she done now calls Pastor to empty out all his closet, shoe closet. And so today we, I brought personally um, seven or eight pairs of shoes. I got another pair or two that I'm praying about getting rid of because I don't want to. But you know, you know how it is. You know, with, with your shoes, you, you know how it get. You, you, you find a reason to keep them, though. You don't need. You know, you know how it is. So anyway, we want to let everybody know. We know we all have those shoes and those things we tug at our hearts with. But we want to ask everybody to please help provide closed-toe shoes that we can provide for people who are disenfranchised and homeless. And we want to make sure that we allow them to get those shoes. We're looking for 200 shoes. 
Look for 200 shoes. We need coats. We need jackets. We need sweaters. We need hoodies. As a matter of fact, you could probably buy them a College Hill hoodie. But the reality of it is this. We need to make sure that everybody knows that we want to go ahead and supply them with something to make sure that we can be a blessing to them. So if you would actually like to, we will, I, I'm going to go ahead and put this out there. Hopefully I don't get in trouble by the church. This is on the fly. But I want to let you know, if you want to do a hoodie, a shirt, or, or, or a scully, or something like that for the person who was a homeless, Please just go ahead and put it in your cash app, College Hill SDA, dollar sign, College Hill SDA. We want to make sure that everybody knows you can put it in the cash app. And when you put it in the cash app, we will make sure that we donate a shirt from our reserve, from our, um, from our inventory and a hoodie from our inventory uh, to those persons. The price is $20 for a t-shirt, $25 for a hoodie. Might as well just get them a hoodie. Just, uh, I mean, just... Just because you know how it's raining outside and whatnot, and we and it's getting fall and it's gonna be a rainy, slippery season. So you want to give them something that they can really hold on to. So we, we want to encourage everybody to have that uh, a level of wisdom and opportunity. If you don't, you feel it's too cumbersome to go to Walmart and then ship it, uh, or, or go to Target or Kroger and ship it, or go to any website and ship it. We want to let you know you can just send us the money through Cash App at the church. At dollar sign college Hill sda and and our uh, paypal and our Venmo, and you can make sure that it goes straight through uh to make sure that we can be a blessing to our community and so we just want to encourage everybody to do that right now uh or, or remember to do it i'll say it again towards the end of service uh, uh we also want to remind everybody uh that we know some people had some birthdays uh specifically uh last sabbath it was my boy rogers on, on friday it was his, 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 his birthday i don't know if he got the shout out because because uh, his phone was messed up, but I'm sure that he's back online. I heard that he got communion, and so that means I want to tell you in personal one more time, happy birthday, Roger. We love you. We're so excited to have you part of our church. And we also want to say happy birthday to all of our other church members and families and friends who watch with us online. We want to say we love you. We thank God for you. We bless God for your existence, and we praise the Lord that he's allowed you to see yet another year. And so we just want to say happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. Your pastor's not going to say it's, the rash is not allowing it today. Plus, you know, I'm not as good at saying as the last pass because, you know, it just ain't my gift. Anyway, however, we just want to tell everybody happy birthday. We're so excited to see you. So, now, uh, as we keep moving on, uh, we want to let everybody also know, uh, last but not least, we are still laying brick to the, to, in the sanctuary. We're so grateful uh, that the Lord is allowing us to still progress uh, with our renovation plans. Uh, I wish we could turn the camera around, but Sister Rika's going to get mad at us for putting her in a camera angle and in a shot for the renovation. However, we'll make sure that we find a smooth way to give everybody a quick pan of the sanctuary next Sabbath. I want to let everybody know we have an amazing pastor preaching next Sabbath. Those of you who know him, I want to make sure that you share your, uh, 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 your church services. As a matter of fact, I done messed up. Can I get everybody to put a comment right now where you watch the church service for? Tell us my neighborhood. You're from, from East Knox. You're from, you from Mechanicsville. You're from Louisville. You can, what part of Kentucky you hollering at us from? Because I know I got a lot of my families hitting me up uh, and watching our broadcast. I want to ask everybody, go ahead and just type and let us know how big our reach and how big our God is and how big our family is getting by all the persons that are currently watching right now. If you're in North, if you're in Mechanicsville, Lonsdale, Southside, you know that's the best side where I live. Uh, we want to make sure the West Side anybody if you all the way out there with strawberry plains with you know with, with deacon scott all the way out with jesus where they all have a cell phone signal we want to make sure everybody has a chance to give us a shout out and let us know where we love live and hope and so we want to ask everybody to make sure that we shout out we pass out and we do all the types of things i'm trying to get a message from somebody and i'm i'm in trouble and i don't know what they're saying Okay, wonderful. All right, and so we want to make sure that we have everybody who's ready to make sure. Give us a shout out. Type in, type in where you're from, what side of the uh, city, the state you live in, and we just want to go ahead and give everybody some love and some fist pounds and some good experiences. So uh, we just want to know how big our family is and be able to shout out and let everybody know. Please also share. If you're gonna like, if you're gonna comment. Might as well share. I mean, you don't put your business out there now. We might as well go ahead and reach as many people as we possibly can. Because we know that the Lord is going to reach our family by the word of our testimony, by the blood of the Lamb, and we not that we are lovers of ourselves. And so we want to make sure that we go ahead and make that outreach right now in Jesus' name. Right now, we also want to remind everybody, we are so grateful for all of our family members and, our, and, our, and the blessings from God that has allowed us to continue to be faithful and tithe and offering. We understand those of our family members who have not because the times have been so difficult. We thank God 
for your faithfulness because it is allowing us to still to go out into the community. Sister Erica went out today and was, <clears throat> and was a blessing with the homeless with uh, her daughter Miranda and Miss Jackson, uh, Amanda Jackson. They all went out this morning and were a blessing to the people. So we want to give shout out to them and all the faithful members who are still being faithful and who are still coming and going and still doing all that they can to be a blessing. We just want to continue to encourage everybody. I'm going to say it one more time. Encourage Everybody, I'm going to say it one more again, encourage everybody that cannot, we believe and we are praying for you. But everyone who can, we ask that we continue to engage in our faith-based relationship with the Lord and that we continue to still donate and disseminate uh, based upon the departments that we believe the Lord has caused us to do, including our renovation. So we want to continue to encourage everybody to do that. Now, last but not least, we are also so excited this morning that we have Sister Alice Hendricks, who is going to sing for us this morning. And we want to ask that everybody uh, who is uh, a fan of hers, once again, go ahead and share, go ahead and like, go ahead and give us some love until she is ready to prepare. Are we ready, Sister Rico, or do we need a couple more moments? Hmm? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're ready. After this song, we will read our Bible verse, we'll have our sermon, and we thank you so much again for joining us.
Amen, amen, and amen again. We thank you so much, Sister Alice, for singing for us this morning. And we all have that prayer, don't we, that the Lord would order our steps in his word. As you open your Bibles with me to Numbers chapter 17. Numbers chapter 17, we want to go through verse 1 through verse 7. Numbers chapter 17, verse 1 through 7. I want to encourage you guys to know that though it is raining outside, that the Lord is doing something. God leads us in this season, in this city, to be stationary for a reason. And I, I believe that there is something the Lord wants to show us in his word today uh, that will be a blessing to all of us. So for those of us who can, uh, if you open on your Bibles with me, Numbers chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. 1 through 7. <clears throat> the Bible reads like this. The Bible says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, verse 2, Speak to the sons of Israel, and get from them a rod for each father's household. Twelve rods from all the leaders according to their father's households. You shall write each name on his rod, and write Aaron's name on the rod of Levi. For there is one rod for the head of each of their father's households. You shall then deposit them in the tent of in the tent of meeting in front of the testimony where I meet with you. Verse 5. It will come about that the rod of the man whom I choose will sprout. Let me read that again. It will come about that the rod of the man whom I choose will sprout. Thus, I will lessen from upon I, I will lessen from upon myself the grumblings of the sons of Israel who are grumbling against you. Verse 6, Moses therefore spoke to the sons of Israel and all their leaders and gave him a rod of peace. For each leader according to their father's households, 12 rods for the rod of Aaron among I mean, with the rod of Aaron among their rods. In verse 7, so Moses deposited the rods before the Lord in the tent of the testimony. In the tent of the testimony. He deposited the rods before the Lord in the tent in the testimony. So let us pray. Father God, I stretch forth my hands to thee. Lord, there is no other help I know. Lord God, if you would draw your hands from me, Lord, where shall I go? Give us this rod, O oh God. Front of the testimony that you may give sprout to the rod at which we labor for you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. And amen. <clears throat> Sermon title today is This This Rod. This Rod. Up until now. God has led the people through Moses. Because it's God's objective to use him as a medium, a segue, to be able to reach his people. It's interesting to see that if you read through the rest of the book of Numbers into the book of Deuteronomy, you'll discover that when the Lord finally wanted to speak to the children of Israel, they weren't exactly right. So the Lord then has to then choose to use Moses continuously because 
the people weren't ready to be called up to the relationship with God that they claimed they had been. As a result, in the middle of this period, discovered is the people find themselves constantly irritated being told what to do. Found themselves continuously bothered by the fact that God continues to give them things one at a time and that the Lord doesn't disperse all of his blessings at once. And it's interesting to see how though they don't have enough faith to be consistent, they do feel the need and they do observe the power of God enough to know that he can do it, but they don't trust it long enough to wait to see him do it in their experience. They, they don't hold on to faith. They, they don't hold on to consistency. They don't believe without wavering. They come and go. They go back and forth. They're up one day, down the next day, down the mountaintop. And, I mean, they're on top of the mountaintop, and then the next day, down in the valley, they ask several times, did you bring us here to perish in the wilderness? We remember when we were in Egypt and things were just a little bit better. I mean, the people keep going back and forth. And specifically at this time frame, God has found that the people have gone back and forth twice simultaneously. I mean, or, or, or the writer of Numbers has chosen to say that they've gone back and forth one after the other. That literally the children of God chose to go back to back with their disbelief. They, they, they had God do one thing and, and said, if he, he be true, then Moses said, if the Lord is true, may the earth open up and swallow them. And the people were swallowed and then it closed back over top of them. And then the people blamed Moses for the issue that came upon them, though they were the ones that questioned God because the truth of what they were really were doing was saying, does God only speak to Moses? Does, does God only speak to you? Does God only speak to you two, you you and Aaron, does he only get through to you two guys? And, 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 and notice here's the interesting part. The truth is the Lord would answer anybody, but he specifically has chosen it. And, and, and notice what happens in the text, and, and we'll, we'll start to make it about us in a second, but notice what happens in the text. The truth is, is that the faith of the people is not in question, but the authority of the leader is in question because the people are tired of following direction and the people are tired of not having all their blessings right now. The people are tired of having a thing being given one at a time and one, t they're just frustrated with having one situation be answered, not all of the situations to be answered and notice what they do. They then therefore question, does God only speak to Moses and Aaron or does God speak to all of us? Are we all not anointed? Are we all not blessed? Are we all not called? Do we all not have power? Do we? And, and, and notice what happens to Moses and Aaron and the process of them interceding on the behalf of the people to make sure that they aren't snuffed out by the anger of God being discontent with their lack of faith and their disbelief and their fickleness. Notice what happens in the text. The Lord asked Moses and Aaron to do more. He, he asked them to do more. And, and see, this is the part that I really want to focus on because if I can be fair, I, I, I don't want to put myself, uh, I don't want to say that I'm oftentimes in the position of Moses or Aaron, but if you have ever been the leader of a family or a work team, a, 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 a group of kids or classrooms or a, a hall monitor even when you was a kid, you will discover that you often find yourself when people have issues having to go just a little bit longer. And that's the part that I want to talk about today is that the truth is 
we have been in some instances and in called to being the foothold and the cornerstone to our family's faith and the direct link and uh, uh, correlation and uh, 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 in relationship with God and in the presence of the people growing in the presence of our families growing in the presence of the in the presence of evil doing, if we can be fair, it sometimes feels that the people within our context that we have been called to pray over and cover and lead and love, that they find themselves discontent with God not answering all of their prayers, but just one of the prayers. And after we've been imploring, after we've been laying down, after we've still been praying, after we've still given all we can, after all that, they still question God and they still don't feel needed. And after the truth is, I really have started to give all I got left. And, 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 and I'm so busy with so many different things in my hands and so many different things on my mind and so many different things on my plate. Uh, gotta keep the house up. Gotta still go to work. Gotta still believe. Gotta still have devotion. Gotta still work on myself. Gotta still keep everybody else together. Got to still make all the bills on time. Got to find a way around. No way. Have more mouth than money. Have more troubles than answers. Have more complexities than resolutions. And when you find yourself at that point, you almost don't, you don't want to say it, but sometimes it feels like I don't have time to pick up faith for you. I just got time to keep going because faith has led me this far and I don't know how I'm going to be able to pick up what you got going on while I'm still trying to get done with this. Still trying to get done with the last task that we struggle with and still got to go forward in the next vision that the Lord is showing me in the next stage that has to come along in the next plan that is laid out before. Still got to develop it. I don't have time to go back in. And notice what the Lord calls us to do. Notice what it is. It says in the text. Notice what the Lord calls. The Lord says, but I need you to stop. I need you to stop. I need you to participate in this exercise because what I need from them is submission because of who I have appointed. I, I need them to stop questioning me so that I can get them further. I need them to stop disbelieving and not trusting so that I can take them to the next place. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm gonna say it this way. The Lord is saying, child, with faith, child of leadership, son and daughter of direction and calling, I need you to stop for a minute. Pick up your faith. And I need you to show it before the people. What I need you to do is lay it in my tent because I need it to be before the testimony so that I can create a new thing in your faith after you feel that it's already been exhausted. That's the hard part. That's the hard part. That is the hard part. God, you want me to do, you want me to stop what you told me to do. To help somebody you've already told what to do to get it right about what they refuse to do just so that you can create my testimony just so you can lay me before the testimony my, my rod you see, see you got to understand in, 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 in the Jews the, the, the children of Israel were sheep herders that, that's what they do for a living they're, the sheep herders they, they get rods as a signature of not just their manhood, but they also receive rods because it's tending to their their flock. They they use the rods to keep the sheep from going too far. They also use a rod and a staff to make sure that the sheep doesn't have any parasites and that the wool is clean and, and that the, 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 the harvest is good when they when they shear the sheep and also when it's perfect for sacrifice. They, the, 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 the rod itself that is from every tribe. No, no, notice what happens in this text. The rod 
is usually given to the man when he begins his father's work. You see that? His father's working. And let me talk specifically about Aaron's rod. You, you know Aaron's rod. Aaron's rod was a rod that he came to Moses with the same rod that they laid on the ground and it became a snake and devoured Pharaoh's other two snakes. You know, the same rod that struck the rock and water poured forth. You, you know the rod, the same rod that was stretched out with the hands of Moses and, and, and over the Red Sea and it with the hand of God parted two different ways. You, you know the rod, the same rod that literally the same rod that literally the Lord allowed Moses later in this book to hold above his head. And, and that rod, as long as it was lifted, as long as the hands and the arms were lifted in the presence of the Lord, that same, same faith, same, same object, same thing, same thing before them. As long as it was up, as long as they were held high, as long as they were, it was before them, as long as it was in the presence of the Lord, that, that same thing caused them to have Victory when others had defeat. That, that, that same thing, that rod, is what God is asking Moses to lay in his temple in front of the testimony. Truth is, God's asking us to lay down our rods too. Because he needs to develop another testimony in the presence of something else. <clears throat> Here's the thing. The rod is not just an establishment of office and calling. But attached to the rod is not just laid before in testimony, but if we can be fair, some of our faith is only based in testimony. You, you know when the Lord called you to uh, uh, do something and, 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 and you didn't know exactly how you were going to make it. You didn't know how it was going to develop. And, and you stretched out in the floor and you cried and prayed in your car and you believed in your bedroom all by yourself and, and you didn't know how it was going to get done. And as a matter of fact, let's just be fair, you, you actually kind of doubted God that it could even become a thing. But you know what? You just said, Lord, I'll just trust and believe that if anybody can do it, God, you can. And, and if you don't, I'm really on a humble and prayer. And truth is, I don't know what you can do because I've never trusted you nor tried you in this kind of way but the truth is the Lord even when you didn't know it still showed up and he still made a way and he still worked it out and he still supplied and he still corrected and he still fixed and watch as he still hid some of the things and he still elevated things that were hidden in and the Lord still found a way to make sure that we had our faith strengthened because of what he was able to cause to come forth in the moments of doubt and in the moments of despair and in the moments of desperation God still found a way to bring it to us and, and, and notice what happens he asked us to bring it not when we have overflow and abundance but he asked us to bring it when our hands are full and when things got busy and when things got hard he asked us to bring it and notice this he asked you to bring your rod of faith not when everything is perfect, but he asks you to bring your rod of faith when everything is busy. And I want to deal with that for a second because doesn't it seem like that's how God and isn't that how life works? That our tests and trials do not come when it's beneficial, but my trouble always seems to come mumbling and complaining and murmuring and scolding and mess ups and mistakes and car accidents and tragedies and issues and problems they always seem to come when i already got too much going on notice what happens it does come the reason why it comes is because if you got it done while you were able to do it it would be in your strength but because God asks you for faith to be proven, the 
things are accomplished in his strength. Okay, you said, all right, Pastor, where is that in the text? Notice what happens in the text. The Bible says it this way. Moses and Aaron, I need you to collect all 12 rods from all 12 tribes while y'all so busy trying to get to the promised land, trying to lead the people through the wilderness after the ground swallowed them up, after the funerals, after the sin offerings have had to be committed, after all the offerings of the Levites and after the tent has been moved and after the, uh, 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 the, 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 the sanctuary has been picked up from one place and put us out another. After all that's been done, son, what I need you to do is I need you to stop and lay all the rods before the people in the tent and watch this. What I need you to do it is I need you to do it when you don't have time for it and you have a destination and the people are complaining about the destination while you are having to stop about not getting to the destination because if you just kept going, they would think it was you and or their pressure that caused you to figure it out. And what I need them to see that it wasn't them, it wasn't you, but son, that it was me. Yeah, that it was me. It, it was me moving those things out the way. It was me who was causing them to get on their way. And if I choose to stop something when I've already started it, I have the right to stop it and still get you where you're supposed to go, even though I had to stop it along the way and still get you to where you needed to be. That's what the Lord is saying. It's something I feel that I wouldn't even put in my sermon. Don't worry about time. Don't worry about the timing. Don't worry about, don't worry about what you see. Don't, don't worry about what you feel is stopped. Don't worry, child of God, about what it feels that the Lord has halted in the presence of you being on the way to where you thought you were going. Do not worry about what it feels. We are stuck in a wilderness experience, given a promise, given a purpose, given a destination, and it feels as though corona, it feels as though people, it feels as though the jobs, it feels as though the call it feels like it has stopped and baby i want you to know today do not worry about time because you serve a timeless god you you serve a god who's not bound by time you serve a god who's not worried about timelines not because he's insensitive to your position but because he has the ability to speed some things up if he wants to and he also has the ability to slow some things down if he feels like it and you said okay pastor wait where's the blessing in that because he has the ability to slow down the progression of cancer in your body but he's also got the potential to speed up your destitute situation so that you can get closer to your blessing but every now and then he needs you to stop and lay your faith before the testimony so that he can work something inside of you and so watch this watch this watch this notice what the lord does he then has everybody's name written on their rod so that there won't be any mistakes. I'm going to say it again. He has their name written on their faith so that when a blessing comes through, it won't be any mistake about whose blessing it is. Let me see if I can say that differently. God's got a specific blessing coming in your house when you stretch out and lay on the floor in front of the testimony. I'm going to say it one more time. In other words, God is saying in this scripture that when you take some time for me, baby, I'm going to take some time to sprout some things in you because notice what's happening in this text. The rods up until this point, they are dead. Okay, I'm going to see if I can explain it to you. In other words, let me tell you what happens. A staff or a rod, what usually happens is it's, it's two pieces of wood that are, are, are almost a vine-like nature that are twined together to make this quarreling uh, 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 little braided situation. And it's extremely tall and it allows them to have some durability. But, 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 but notice what happens. You have to kill, you have to cut it from its living thing so that it will dry and become hard and strong wrong so that you can use it and make it mobile okay in other words what i'm saying is that the the rod has to be dead for it to be used 
But what God is, okay, let me see if I can say it again. In other words, some situations that need to be used have to be dead, and God has to prove to us that he can give it life. Okay, I, I'm, I'm going to see if I can say that again. Uh, uh, let me see if I can say it one more time. In other words, literally the rod that is made has to be cut off so that it can be used so that it may be known. <laughs> okay, it, it has to be cut off. So that it can be used by the person who needs to lay it in front of the testimony. In other words, the Lord needs to take some dead situations that we done lost faith in, but that we still use. And he needs to show us that he can still give it life. Okay, all right. That might have blessed somebody. I, I don't know who missed it, but I'm going to say it one more time. The Lord has allowed some things that need to be dead to be used so that when you lay it in front of the testimony, that it will sprout new life. And give birth to something new. Okay, watch this. Here's the second part that I think everybody needs to know. Not only does the Lord cause dead things to be living, but God will also cause. Oh, it's right here in my text. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting older. I can't do it like it no more. <laughs> and not only will he cause dead things to be living, but notice what the Bible also says. He will not only cause dead things to be living, but he also will cause it to be specific to your specific faith. So watch this. The Lord is literally saying this scripture, and I'm done. God wants to give life. He wants to do it. Because I feel I'm moving differently right now. God wants to give life to us. wants to do it by causing us to stop what we're currently doing. I had a whole other direction where this sermon was going. I had a whole new destination where this thing is, and I want you to feel it right now. It is not even that where you were going was the wrong place. Moses and Aaron were already about the Lord's business. They were already going the way God wanted them to. But notice in scripture that literally the Lord wanted them to stop to help create the testimony. To help encourage the faith. To help get them to the next level. I'm going to have to preach this text again next week because the Lord's totally shifting me somewhere else. I mean, after Pastor Bat. Notice this. The Lord literally wants us to stop going in a good direction so that he can fix not just us because nothing's wrong about where we're going. He wants to adjust and give us a new testimony so that he can cause others to believe so that we can go not only faster, but together. Okay. So here's the resolution to why things are not working out at your house. This is the reason to why things are not working out within yourself. This is the reason why things are not working out in your community. These are the reasons why the things are not working out in your family because the Lord literally wants us to stop where we're going so that he can fix the faith so that we can all go together. That's where he wants me to go today. I, I was fighting it, but I get it now. God. I didn't realize it, Lord. Thank you, God. God needs us to stop where we're going so that he can build our faith in the presence of others that it may cause them to come along with us. All be delivered. Mother, husband, brother.
brother, sister, auntie, uncle, nephew, niece, grandparent, grandchild. The way we fix, the way we fix, the way we fix, the way we get them, the way we change this, the way it turns around, the way it becomes new, is that we must stop. Lay out before the Lord in his temple, in his tent of meetings, before his testimony and pray. That's what, that's what the Lord wants today. He wants you to pray. He, he wants you to give it up. He, he wants you to quit. It's not condemnation. This is about gearing up and storing up some energy so that we can move. He, he wants you to stop what you're doing. Mm-hmm. He wants you to stop what you're doing because God wants to set you up to where he wants you to go. That's what it is today. I didn't get it. That's what it was. That's what the Lord wants us to know today. God is speaking. God wants you. You're trying to figure out why they haven't turned the corner. You're trying to figure out why. It hasn't gotten better. You're trying to figure out why your words aren't sinking in, why people aren't listening to your wisdom, why children aren't taking your instruction, why the church won't just keep moving. You don't just, you, you're trying to figure it out because God wants us to stop what we are doing, and it's a good thing because he needs us to pump the brakes so that they can see faith at work in you. So that we can move together in a way we weren't able to move by ourselves. That's the word. That's the word. Here it is, family. I don't know who I'm talking to right now. I don't know who's struggling. I don't know which one of you are going through. I don't know what's broken. I don't know what's not fixed. I, I don't know. I don't know who hurt you. I, I don't know what thing you're trying to get over. I don't know what thing you're trying to get past. I, I don't know. I know you're trying to go somewhere. I know you're trying to please the Lord. I know you're trying to live right. I know you're trying to fix it. I know you're trying to bind it together. I know you're trying to do his will. I know you're trying to be his servant. I know. I, God, know God knows I know God. God, you know, you know, you know, God. If I don't know, God knows. God knows the desires of it. God knows that you trying to do your best with what you got left with, what you were given and what's been given to you and what you messed up with and yet you trying to fix it. God knows. God, 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 God knows. God knows. But he needs you to stop. And he needs you to lay out in his tent. And he needs your testimony. Because watch this. When you lay out with your faith, he'll cause it to bud without water. He'll cause it to grow without sense. He'll cause it to rush without a wind. He'll cause it to move without legs. He'll cause it to be fixed without tools or glue or duct tape. God will keep it together. What I need you to know, this, this is, God needs you to stop. God needs us to stop. So they can be fixed. that it can be developed so that it can be developed and when it develops in you it will be enough to save and move together the ones that he has purposed for you but just won't move
the ones he's put under your leadership, under your covering, under your blessing. Who are supposed to be co-laborers, but they find themselves spectators. He, he will develop it. After. Get it. Let me pray with you. Father, dear Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Salvation is going to come by those who wait on the Lord. By those who stretch out before him. By those who take their calling and their purpose and establishment and lay it before the testimony. And wait on you to give life to a thing that was moving dead. God, I ask right now for every child in the house of God. Lord, that you would embolden and empower them to have faith. To trust you that if they stop now, that it won't be much, but it'll be just enough for you to show faith. Just enough for you to show conquering. Just enough for you to show blessing. It's just enough for you to show development. That the ones who they've been praying over, the ones they've been inceded for, the ones that they hope would get it, can receive it. That they could receive it. Bless us, O God. To have the trust to stop. That we can go together with the ones who we've been praying for. So God, today we come in Jesus' name, believing that Jesus is the Son of God and he died for our sins. And knowing that the Father is leading us to a destination called heaven. And along the way, we've got some pit stops mountains to climb, some land to possess, and some family to grow, and some time to be fruitful and multiply, and some time to be the ones that reach and evangelize the testimonies, have some prayers and heal the sick, and cover the naked, and feed the hungry, and house the homeless. God, we believe those are our pit stops along the way to gain more family, gain more presence, gain more testimony, gain more faith, gain more belief, spread the good news about who Jesus Christ really Yeshua, Jesus, Yah, Nisi, Shalom, Shama, whatever you need to be. We believe that it's all a part of it. And God be asked right now. Develop it in your children, O oh God. We'll forever give you the praise, honor, and the glory. Because you are the one who stopped us so that one day we would be unstoppable. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, amen. We thank you so much, College Hill, for being faithful in your love. We ask that everybody who was not here earlier before, that you would please remember to send a faithful tithe and offering those of us who cannot. We praise God for the fact that you are watching with us. Continue to like and share. That could be your donation to the Lord. That we would be able, like, share, comment, that it would be your donation to the Lord. That we could find a monetary way to continue to bless the people of God. I believe some of our family members in the church have been blessed already. We know some of us are struggling with groceries, rent, electricity bills. We ask that if you're having this struggle, please, within our church, you have to be a member. Our conference is offered to be a blessing unto you and help you with a month or so of your expenditure that we can love you. Please contact me uh, or Sister Arika uh, through our Facebook and or through our Messenger app. And we want to make sure that the Lord is able to get to you from the faithfulness of your conference that loves you and the church that can't wait to see you again and bless God of what he's kept you through during this pandemic. We'd like to ask you, ma'am and sir, that you would please be able to find your way to our inbox to make sure that we can reach you and love you. Remember, it must be a member that we can receive this financial help. And yes, I said financial 
help. We want to make sure that everybody can do that. Now, last but not least, we want to make sure everybody, we stay, uh, 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 have you registered to vote? I, I don't know. Have you registered to vote? We want to encourage everybody to vote. And we want to make sure that everyone remembers we're physically distant, but we're socially aware. And that the church is never closed. It's just shifted to your house. We love you. We thank you. God bless you. Have a happy Sabbath.